Achievement of the Anna Washington Redskins have accounted for four Super Bowl victories. The 49ers last won it four years ago, but they haven't gone past the first round of the playoffs since then. And this year, they're six and five and struggling for a playoff spot. Winners and Roger Craig, the NFC's leading rusher after 11 weeks. The winner tonight will still be alive in the midst of the playoff picture. The loser will be alive, but barely breathing. The Redskins play the MVP, and the winner of that award last year, Doug Williams, will be the quarterbacks in a crucial NFC matchup tonight. It's the Washington Redskins and the San Francisco 49ers on ABC's Monday Night Football. Candlestick Park in San Francisco tonight, a key matchup. And the season were to end tonight, it would look like this. Philadelphia would win the NFC East. Chicago would take the Central with 10 and 2, while New Orleans with a two-game lead over the Rams would win the West at 9 and 3. But perhaps more interesting, particularly to the two combatants tonight, would be the wild card contenders. Minnesota would win if it were over tonight. Phoenix would also be the other wild card. Of course, there is the rest of it, the Rams, the Jazz, the 49ers, and the Washington Redskins. And these two teams are been linked to coaching jobs in, in recent rumors. I asked Bill Walsh last night, who is in his 10th season and has one year remaining on his contract here to coach the 49ers, if he would, in fact, coach the 49ers next season, he was completely noncommittal. He wants that controversy. Leadership as a Redskins starter during regular season games, Doug Williams is only four. East, whereas the 49ers with the victory would still be two games back of the New Orleans Saints in the NFC West, but they'd be in a tie for second with the Los Angeles Rams. And they have already beaten the Rams this season in Anaheim with one game remaining here against Los Angeles the last weekend of the year. Mike Kofer, who took over for Ray Wershing, he won the job in training camp. He'll kick off. Ricky Sanders drops back deep for Washington. He's at the goal line. So here we go before a sellout crowd at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. It's the up back taking it at the 11. That's Jamie Morris. And the rookie out of Michigan takes it back to the 24-yard line. And so now Doug Williams, who began the season and started the first three games, underwent an appendectomy, and Mark Rippon took over. Then he came back off IR. Kelvin Bryant is on the inactive list tonight. Timmy Smith starts it running back. Craig McEwen is the H-back. Monk and Clark are the wide receivers, and Donnie Warren is the tight end. And now Joe Caravello has moved in to start at H-back, and there is the offensive line. They're all veterans, but they've been banged up, and they have been moving around. From the 24-yard line, last year's Super Bowl hero, Timmy Smith, is stopped for no game. Michael Walter comes up to make the tackle as we take a look at the San Francisco defense. Roberts was shaken up last week, but back in the lineup tonight, Carter having a fine year at nose tackle. As far as the linebackers are concerned, Keena Turner has been placed on injured reserve, and that's the rookie Romanowski starts at right outside backer. Don Griffin is also on the inactive list. McHire and right at the corners, Fuller and Lott are the safeties. Second and 10 from the 24-yard line. And again, it's Timmy Smith. And the crowd is fired up as the Niner defense has stopped him for no gain. Two plays in a row, and that's Ricky Ellison in his sixth year out of USC making the stop. Al, you touched on something that will impact heavily on the Washington Redskins offense, that Kelvin Bryant is not here. Bad knee, can't go, having a great year. But it changes the entire offensive thinking of the Redskins. He is such a good receiver out of that backfield. And you can fake the run, you can fake the pass with him in there, and when you don't have him in there, well, you get a pretty good eye defensively, defensively of what they are going to do. They'll miss him tonight. Third and nine, Mike Oliphant has come off injured reserve. He's in the backfield, number 25. And they send him out into the pattern along with everybody else, and the pass is caught by Oliphant, who makes a nice move on Cox and takes it to the 41-yard line. So the rookie, who was sensational in preseason play, especially in a game against Miami, and has just come back off injured reserve, gets a Washington first down. Mike Oliphant had to go on injured reserve because of a hamstring problem, and Al is right. He really caught our eye in a game we did down at Joe Robbie Stadium, and it's because of his ability to come out of the backfield and be a factor in the passing game. This is only the second reception of his entire NFL career. He had one for seven yards going into tonight's game, and he could be the factor.
factor they've been missing since Kelvin Bryant has been out of the lineup. Look for Oliphant to play a lot tonight. So they convert a third and nine, and now on first down, Timmy Smith is stopped by Charles Haley. And we have Haley isolated, and what a night he had the last time we saw the 49ers on a Monday in Chicago. Charles Haley, the sack leader on the field tonight with 10 and a half sacks, but I think he illustrates right there that he's more than just a pass rushing specialist. He's come a long way from tiny James Madison. This guy can get after the quarterback. He can disrupt the game. Second and 10 from the 41 yard line. And they keep it on the ground. And a hole for Smith is exploited for a gain of about four. Smith, who burst into prominence last year in postseason play and ran for 204 yards in the Super Bowl, got off to a good start this year, but he's been relatively silent of late. And his average there, 3.2, is very low for a premier running back. The league average is exactly four. So many changes on that offensive line. It's affected everything the Redskins have done, particularly their running game. So many injuries. Third and six. That's Monk in motion. And Williams protected well, throws, and a flag goes down as the catch is made by Monk at the 50. He is short of the first down, but we have a flag as well. And Jerry Seaman heads this crew, and he'll tell us about it. I bet it's Monk pushing off. I think Art Monk pushed off on the play. He was in motion, and when he turned upfield, he visibly pushed off. There's Art Monk, number 81. Watch him as he turns upfield, working against Torrey Nixon, and a, a good shot of him actually pushing Nixon backwards. And that flag came flying from the back judge, clear downfield, and that's his responsibility to look at that. Ronnie Lott discussing his options. Well, it'll be short of the first down. The tackle made and stop Monk short of the first down, and that's the option being given Ronnie Lott. But they're going to march him back, it looks like, mm -hmm. Frank. I think they think that the Redskins might go on a fourth down in inches. Pass interference, number 81 offense, still third down. So the option the 49ers had was to put Washington in a fourth and less than one or a third and 16. Torrey Nixon, uh, I guess, helped his own cause by inadvertently losing his footing and going flat on his backside. That made it extremely obvious what happened, but a calculated gamble here by the 49ers, giving the Redskins another shot at a first down. Third and 16 from the 35. Monk comes in motion. And Williams throws for Oliphant incomplete. And it paid off. And Washington forced to punt. And this has been a real problem area for the Redskins this season. Greg Coleman is their current punter, and he is the fourth different punter the Redskins have utilized this year. They started with Steve Cox, and they went to Tommy Barnhart. He went on injured reserve. He can come back next week, and they'll have a decision to make whether to activate him or keep Coleman. John Taylor is back to receive at the 25-yard line. Dave Harbour does the snapping. And it's a low line drive at the 29. Taylor runs it back to the 45-yard line. A 16-yard return, and the Niners have their first possession near midfield with 10.41 to play in the first quarter. Niners have the football for the first time tonight. And with Joe Montana, the quarterback, Craig and Rathman are the running backs, Rice and Wilson are the wideouts. Ron Heller starts at tight end, though they have activated John Frank, and that could make a big difference down the stretch for the 49ers. Randy Cross, the venerable one, for so long their guard, now their center, anchoring the line. 49ers at their own 45. First and 10, number one in the league in rushing. But their passing game has been in disarray, and they begin with a swing pass to Craig, and a first down to the 42-yard line. Mel Kaufman, number 55, making the stop. Not only is Craig their leading rusher, he's their leading receiver as well. That's catch number 58. The four-man front with man butts Grant and Manley. 
And then the linebackers, Monty Coleman is hurt. He is not here. Kaufman gets the start on the left side with Olkowitz and Wilbur Marshall. Wilburn and Green are both injured but playing. Walton and Bowles are the safeties, and they've really been working. The opposition has on Barry Wilburn the last three weeks. And he's lined up one-on-one -on -one with Jerry Rice. Rice is in motion to the inside, and Montana to throw again, and again it's Craig to the 37-yard line. Olkowitz makes the tackle, so the first two plays off the Walsh chart are swing passes to Craig. There's a penalty marker down over around the far 30-yard line. What's interesting here is that both times they've gone away from Jerry Rice. Jerry drawing the double coverage in the rolled-up zone. Whoa! A roughing the quarterback call against the against the Redskins, and it does not please Gibbs. But one thing the 49ers are doing, they're splitting Jerry Rice to the one side of the field. The Redskins are giving Wilburn help. They're rolling their defense to that side, and San Francisco now both times has gone back the opposite direction and swing passes to Roger Craig. Personal foul against the Redskins, and they'll march the ball. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 40 defense. Jerry Seaman initially gave a call that looked like roughing the passer. It was downfield against Alvin Walton. It did not involve a hit against Montana. From the 23-yard line, they give it to Craig. He bounces off a tackle at the line of scrimmage and squirts forward to the 20-yard line for a pickup of about two. Joe Montana in his 10th season. Hard to believe, too, Al and Dan, that he's only thrown one touchdown pass going back all the way to September the 25th. Many troubles with the elbow in the opening game of the season, then the ribs, and then the back problem. He's missed a couple of games during that stretch, but one touchdown pass for that entire period of time. After he had started the season with 10 touchdown passes in the first four games. Here's Craig. So Craig has caught the ball twice and run with it twice. He is stopped by Darrell Grant. Craig over 1,000 yards this season in rushing. We mentioned the league average is four yards per carry. Craig comes in tonight with a 5.1 average, which is terrific. There are running backs maybe like an Eric Dickerson that maybe make your heart rate accelerate a little bit when they get their hands on the football, but I don't know if there's a running back in the game that is more enjoyable to watch once he has the ball under his arm than Roger Craig. Craig comes out on third and five as Montana retreats. As time throws over the middle, touchdown, Brent Jones. One of the problems in the 49er passing game has been the lack of a pass-catching tight end because of the injury to John Frank, who's back tonight, but it's the other tight end, Brent Jones, making the catch. Boy, when you're getting double coverage on the outside and you can hook your tight, up, tight end up with Alvin Walton, you've got a good chance of getting him wide open, and that was the case. They were covering outside, two on Wilson and two on Jerry Rice, and they locked up the tight end, Jones, against Walton. Kofer's extra point is good, and as was the case the last time we had the 49ers on a Monday, they take the opening drive in for a touchdown. They did it against Chicago. They do it here against Washington. Montana got the protection up front. It takes a while to run this crossing pattern. Alvin Walton, one step late. Championship game in January of 82, and the 49ers trailing Dallas by six. Joe Montana made what is known in the Bay Area as the throw. Dwight Clark made what is simply known as the catch. Niners beat Dallas, go on to beat Cincinnati in the Super Bowl. And back live at Candlestick Park, it's seven to nothing San Francisco. Kofer's kick taken by Ricky Sanders. And from the goal line, he brings it back out to the 16-yard line. And their second possession starts from the 16 for the Redskins. 
Again, the crossing pattern over the middle, and Jones, you can see how far behind Alvin Walton is. Alvin Walton, number 40, one of the best supporting strong safeties in the game, one of the hardest hitters, but his specialty is not being isolated one-on-one -on -one in coverage, and the 49ers waste no time getting after it. Took him five plays, plus the personal foul penalty against Walton from the 17. First and 10, Washington. Williams hitting Clark, and he spun down, but he has a first down getting to the 29-yard line. Tackle is made by Tim McKayer, the cornerback in his third year out of Texas Arlington. Gary Clark also out of James Madison. You won't find too many opposing players and professional teams from James Madison College. Let's take a look at one of the best in the business. You got to respect that speed, and he gets that respect from McKayer, turns it inside. This time, Williams hits him right in the numbers. That's his 40th catch of the season. All three of their wide receivers have caught at least 40 passes this year. And stopped for no gain is Timmy Smith. Michael Carter, number 95, having a great year in the middle in his fifth year. Out of SMU, he has really blossomed. Well, he's been good since he first came into the league, but he's really beginning to get the notoriety he deserves now. And it's an interesting match in the middle, Al, when you match this guy, Michael Carter, 285, in reality probably closer to 300 pounds, against Jeff Bostic, who they list in the program at 260 pounds, who's probably closer to 250. There's a good look at Bostic. Jeff giving away almost 50 pounds in the middle. Tough for him to move Carter around. Loss of a couple, second and 12. Oliphant makes his second catch and is tackled at the 30-yard line by McKayer with Walter also helping out of the play and a flag down at the 26-yard line. Another penalty. Jerry Seaman asking for the clock to be stopped. 6.28 to play in the first quarter, and they may add a few more seconds onto it as he points to the clock. Getting ready to tell us about the penalty. And again, it's against Washington. For a legal procedure. This could be a formation. Joe Gibbs will turn 48 next week. Illegal formation. The left side of the line of scrimmage did not have an eligible receiver. Penalty decline. Third down. Please set the stadium clock. To 638. About the Please problem. reset the stadium clock. Well, you can see there is no wide receiver on the left side, and this is what happens when you play a lot of different people. Both the wide receiver, top of your screen, off the line of scrimmage, and that wing back off the line of scrimmage. Well, the, the wide receiver, bring him up. The wide receiver there at the top of the picture had to be up on the line of scrimmage. This happens when you keep changing people around. The Redskins have been doing it all season long. Third and ten from the 30. Monk goes in motion. Williams to put it up again. Again, the protection is good, and this is Clark making the catch for a first down up at the 46-yard line. Three premier wide receivers for Williams to choose from. And in reality, Doug Williams, if he has his druthers, will always go to one of those three wide receivers. Much more comfortable working the ball vertically downfield on patterns like this to Gary Clark. And if you're a guy in a red jersey, how do you defense that? Clark on the ground when he makes the reception, the throw perfectly on target, impossible to defend. First and 10 from the 46. San Francisco ahead, 7 to nothing. Smith fumbles and recovers it himself back at the 35-yard line. Bill Romanowski dislodged the football. Number 53, the rookie starting in place of the injured Keena Turner. He's a rookie out of Boston College. That play designed to go inside, nothing doing there. Timmy just took it outside on his own, and Romanowski, that rookie from Boston College, knocked the ball from his hands. He's in there because of the injury last week to Keena Turner here. Smith reads it to the outside. Gets the hand in there, does Romanowski. And Timmy Smith very wisely does not try to pick it up and run with it. He covers it. He loses 10 on the play. Back to the 36. It is second and 20. Pressure on. Screen is set up. It's caught by Don Warren, the tight end, and he moves forward to the 40-yard line. It'll be third down at about 16. 
and Jeff Bostic is shaken up on the play, and they've had a lot of problems keeping that offensive line together. But he appears to be all right for the moment. They have shifted more people around oh, on that offensive think. line. I mean, maybe the most famous offensive line of the 80s, the Hogs, but a lot of the same people are there, but they're all in different positions. And if you know anything about the game of football, you know the continuity is maybe more important in the offensive line than anywhere else. On third and 16, Williams under a big rush underthrows Sanders, who almost came back to make the catch. Jeff Fuller that time forced the issue on a safety blitz. And the Redskins in their four wide receivers, they did not have enough people to pick up the safety blitz. And you saw Williams, he was going down. The two wide receivers split to the left. Not enough men to pick up the blitz by Fuller. Now, this, by this time, the ball is in the air. And... Williams on the third and long yardage decided I'll just unload it and it would be perhaps in his mind almost like a punt. Well, Ricky Sanders was, uh, you know, arguing that Eric Wright had grabbed him and pulled him backwards and I don't know that he didn't have a legitimate complaint. I mean, Eric Wright had him by the shoulders, keeping him from working back to the ball. On fourth down, Greg Coleman's second punt is another low kick. Picked up by Taylor at the 20. He has no blocking and is buried at the 19-yard line. Reggie Branch makes the tackle. The second line drive by Coleman. Let's, let's take another look here. Look at the top of the screen. There's Eric Wright, number 21. Look at the left arm pulling Ricky Sanders back. I'm sorry. I, I don't know how that doesn't draw a flag. Let's take another look from this angle. Look at Eric Wright with the left arm wrapped all over Ricky Sanders, blatantly dragging him to the ground. But no call. 49ers get it after the punt. Montana escapes the sack, rolls to his right, and throws for a first down to Mike Wilson. An 11-yard pickup. Darrell Green covering on the play. First down, San Francisco. And speaking of Joe Montana, his alma mater, the number one ranked Notre Dame Fighting Irish and the Trojans of USC in the biggest college game of the season. Coming up this Saturday at the Los Angeles Coliseum, 3.30 Eastern time, both unbeaten. They've been meeting for so long, and it's the biggest college game in a long time to decide number one. From the 29-yard line, Roger Craig goes nowhere. It'll be second and 10. He is stopped by Darrell Grant. Frank, you've played in that USC-UCLA game before. How, how tough is it going to be for the Trojans to come back after the, the Rose Bowl win last week? Puts them in the Rose Bowl and back-to-back -back games of this magnitude. I think they've tried to keep from thinking about Notre Dame, but as soon as that game was over, that was where they were focused. <laughs> they want a, a bit of problem getting up for that one. They never do. Nor does Notre Dame. Second and 10, San Francisco from the 29. Great protection for Montana. And Jerry Rice goes down. The crowd wants a flag. They don't get it. He and Barry Wilburn got tangled up, but no flag. Oh, and Jerry Rice gets up limping, nursing a bad ankle that he that injured bad, earlier bad in the year. Jerry Gray of the Rams pulled him down on a face mask, and it's been hampering him ever since. All right, we're going to end up with Rice and Wilburn ISOed. A good look at Wilburn going back to the football. And actually, it was after Wilburn fell that he inadvertently fell on the heel of Jerry Rice. And that never is going to draw a flag. Mm -hmm. And of course, Wilburn is playing with a very sore knee. He has been victimized for the last couple of weeks trying to play perhaps before he really should with that sore knee. So he had a bad ankle on the part of Rice going against Wilburn with the bad knee. And right now, Rice goes to the sideline, and that could be a major blow for the 49ers because they have not been getting productivity from their other wide receivers, namely John Taylor and Mike Wilson, and they also have Terry Greer. But quite frankly, there's no one in the league like a healthy Jerry Rice. And it's a step down when you have to bring a Taylor in or a Greer, a considerable step down. In fact, in fact, with Rice going out, they bring Taylor in. He didn't know where to line up, and that, that cost the 49ers a timeout. timeout. Oh, and Montana is chewing on Taylor. So they pick Terry Rice walking the sidelines now without a lift, but if you've ever had a bad ankle, ever tried to play any kind of a sport on it, you know that it takes a long time to get well. You heard it again over and over, but usually you can go back and compete, and I think we'll see Jerry Rice again. Third and 10 from the 29-yard line. 
Montana under a heavy rush throws for Craig, and Craig is tackled at the 32 by Clarence Vaughn, and had Craig turned the corner on Vaughn, he might have gone all the way. Vaughn not only making the stop to prevent a big gain, but stopping a first down as well, and the 49ers will have to kick. It's probably just as well that Clarence Vaughn didn't know how much greenery there was behind him, because your point is well made, Al. If he should happen to slide down the body of Craig, he's off. Barry Hilton, the rookie punter out of Colorado, has his kick fielded on the run at the 31 by Gary Clark. And a big run back for Clark, and he's taken out of bounds at the 35 by the punter, Hilton. And the Redskins have had a lot of different guys running back kicks. They opt to go with Clark, the wide receiver, and it pays off with a big run back here. Gary Clark did this in his college days. Redskins have a couple of fine ones. Daryl Green also is a good return man. We remember that so well last year. But Gary Clark with a nifty return, even though this is only his third punt return in four years. They don't like to use your wide receivers too frequently because usually Gary Clark is running fly patterns and you give him a little breather. A beautiful move there. Good field position for the Redskins, courtesy of Gary Clark. Washington at the San Francisco 35. 226 to go in the quarter. Smith gives it to Monk. Monk is looking to throw. And Monk throws incomplete, intended for Gary Clark. But staying with Clark, Eric Wright on a play the Skins have used before. Not this season, though. That's Monk's first pass attempt of 88. That's the risk you run when you run a reverse pass like that because you only have one receiver downfield. And if he should be covered, which is the case here, I think we're going to get a good look at how Eric Wright isn't buying this at all. And Art Monk, at least if you're going to run it, put the ball here in the hands of a veteran wide receiver who's not going to throw it up for grabs. And nothing like a nice tight spiral, huh, guys? That was a textbook throw. Sonny Jurgensen throw. Second and 10 from the 35. It's caught at the 22 and forward progress for a first down for Ricky Sanders. And they're working on Roger Craig, a little ice being applied to the 49ers running back. Out of protection for Doug Williams. He waited and waited until Sanders made the break. Doug Williams, the very deserved Travelers Man of the Year for the Washington Redskins. Every Tuesday after their home games in Washington, Doug Williams on his own will go out to the public schools around the area and talk to kids about drug abuse. He's quite a man. He has the Redskins at the 23, first and 10. 49ers on top, 7-0, late first quarter. Smith on a play that worked with great success against Denver in the Super Bowl, takes it to the 19. They just ran the counter gap all day long when Williams wasn't throwing touchdown passes and shredded Denver, as you all recall. That new faces in that offensive line to be running that counter gap, and it has not been as effective, of course, as it was a year ago. But again, we talked about the injuries, the many injuries, the changes. Lachey is now over at left tackle. You got Jacoby, he's just backing up along that line. Unbelievable number of offensive line changes, and that'll give you an idea. On second and six, it's Smith, and he takes it to the 15-yard line. Good hole there, setting up third and about two, with Ronnie Lott coming up to make the tackle, and 45 seconds left in the first quarter. There are two of the original Hogs. That's Joe Jacoby, and immediately to his left, camera right, is Russ Grimm. A couple of the original Hogs talking it over there on the sideline. A good look here at the counter gap coming right at you. Take a look at the left guard, left tackle. That's McKenzie, Lachey, and Timmy Smith turning it right up. And, hey, how, how's that for support by Ronnie Lott having the free safety only two yards off the line of scrimmage in there to make a tackle? Third and two and a half from the 15-yard line. Williams, great protection, wide open over the middle. Sanders for the touchdown. Williams sitting back in the pocket, had all day. Sanders breaks free, and with seven seconds to play in the period, they are an extra point away from tying it. Great effort on the part of Monk to clear that area. Well, Sanders took it downfield, did a little hitch. Plenty of time for Doug Williams. Now watch Monk. The pick, Frank. Watch the pick. pick. <laughs> well, I call that a great effort. <laughs> You're a wide receiver. You know that's a great effort. Art Monk. Get away with it. Art Monk has the pick. He cleans off Fuller and allows Gary Clark to be wide open. 
Whoa, and Williams with a lot of time. Again, that offensive line clicking well for the Skins tonight. The rookie <laughs> Chip Lowmiller's extra point is good. Hey, you got a lot of offensive linemen in this league that don't block as well as Art Monk. You know, you got to make this look good, though. I mean, you can't run down there and just bang into Fuller. You sort of brush, make it look like he sort of ran into you. And it was executed as well as you're going to see it executed. And into the end zone is Sanders. Let's take a look at it again. Buck, Buck has been doing this well for a lot of years. Great receiver in his own right now. The idea is to take the man off Sanders. There is a switch by the two defensive backs. No way that Eric Wright could get back and cover his man. And Fuller, of course, is staying with Monk and wide open to Sanders. Well, they catch, you know, give Joe Gibbs credit. He calls that play when he assumes the 49ers are going to be locked in man coverage. And that was he throw the flag. <laughs> DuBose and Taylor are back to receive Low Miller's kick. This is Doug DuBose from the seven yard line. And he's tackled out of the 22 yard line by Terry Orr. The skin, skins were off sides, Al, I believe. A yeah. guy, the official threw his flag and it didn't even land on the field, landed clear right. over in the bench. It's out of bounds at the 35. <laughs> that is the call. That's just inexcusable. I mean, that's one of the worst penalties in sport to be offsides on a kickoff. It's one of the few measured plays where you can do it at your leisure, at your own pace, and to mistime it and be across mm -hmm. the 35-yard line at the snap of the football. Boy, is it tough on your teammates. You know, Dan. Oh. They've been on a full 50-yard sprint now. You come back, you tee it up, you do it all over again. Time is expired. Times you get great runbacks after this. Number 78, kicking team. That's a foul on the end of the first quarter. There are a bunch of them offsides. Change end zones. Reed kick. Five-yard penalty. So they'll change end zones. They'll kick the other way to start the second quarter. Word from your local station. The Reno. from the Goodyear blimp, which has had a busy week uh, above the Rose Bowl on Saturday. And there it is hovering above Candlestick Park tonight and back down south for the USC Notre Dame game at the Coliseum. This coming Saturday, as we start the second quarter, Low Miller kicking off to San Francisco. The game tied 7-7. John Taylor brings it back to the 31-yard line. And the 49ers will set up from there as we take a look at the numbers through the first 15 minutes. Numbers close, except for the time of possession on the part of the Redskins. A couple of teams very proficient at running the football, three and five yards respectively for the Redskins and the 49ers, hardly representative of their talents, I would think. 49ers in through 11 games, the leading rushing team in the NFL. Roger Craig sets up split to the left at the top of the screen as Montana looks that way. Throws for Craig too far. He'd gotten behind Wilbur Marshall, so they lined Craig up as a wide receiver, and he'd beaten Marshall, but Montana's pass about a yard too far. I'll tell you the respect they have for Wilbur Marshall, the Redskins. They set him out against Craig, one of the fine receivers, either out of the backfield or as a wide receiver, but Craig rolled by him and Montana just off the fingertips. And that's a throw that you don't normally see Joe Montana overthrow. He's got some real touch at dropping that football over the top of a defender. You had to look there at Todd Bowles, number 23, the free safety coming over. He was late on arriving. If that throw's a good one, it's an easy completion. Second and 10, Jerry Rice is back in the game. That's Rice in motion. Montana hits Craig, and Craig is tackled at the 34-yard line, a combination of Mel Kaufman and Neil Olkowitz, the two linebackers making the stop. It'll be third down and six. And again, Kaufman getting the start because of the injury to Monty Coleman, who would normally be their starting outside linebacker, but he's back in Washington and on the inactive list tonight, along with Kelvin Bryant. Kaufman perhaps a better linebacker against the run. Monty Coleman, an excellent linebacker in pass defense. He usually is the linebacker the Redskins leave in there. Of course, he's home watching tonight. 
Three receivers set to the right on third and six. Montana looks that way, but Mann flushes him out of the pocket. And then the throw is caught at the 41 by Mike Wilson. Very close to a first down. They have to get to the 41 and a half, and we'll see where they spot it. Well, Joe Montana maybe has, and look at that, a first down for the 49ers. This guy, I think, has taken more than his share of criticism as maybe a guy who doesn't have it anymore, but he still has the mobility. Watch Charles Mann here collapse Harris Barton back into the pocket. He forces Joe to improvise, and I think as most of you have figured it out by now, I don't know that there's a quarterback in the game who has done more out-of-the-pocket improvisation for more positive things than Joe Montana. And he goes to the air on first down from the 42 and again goes for Wilson, but this time he is blanketed by Darrell Green. It'll be second and 10. Both cornerbacks, including Darrell Green, we talked about the knee injury of Barry Wilburn, but Darrell Green has been fighting injuries throughout the entire season. He, too, has a very sore knee. Also a rib problem. And it's tough when you're a defensive back, particularly with a knee injury, because you're... Receiver always knows where he's going to go, and if that thing is a little loose and rattly, it really is tough. Yeah, but I'll take Daryl Green with a bad knee and bad ribs. Both bad knees. He's, he's still better than 95% of the corners in the league. On second and 10, Montana to Jones, and it's incomplete as he gets dislodged from the football by Wilbur Marshall. Ball and Marshall get there together, incomplete third and 10. I guess that's the kind of play that they gave up two number one draft picks to get out of the former Bear, the free agent. And that was very close to a fumble. Sure was. He's stripped it a few times in his life. Let's take a look at it again. Does he have possession? The ball is in there. And here comes the marshal. Mm. Whoa. Very close to the fumble. From that angle, it, it, it looked like both feet were down, didn't it? Third and ten, Montana hits the open man, Taylor, for a first down and a lot more and out of bounds at the 36-yard line. The fleet wide receiver in his second year out of Delaware State, John Taylor. First down, San Francisco after a 22-yard pickup, and Rice is hurt again. Well, Jerry Rice is downfield trying to block for John Taylor. He's going to come back on Alvin Walt. And Walton's going to end up getting lower than Jerry Rice, and that's how Rice gets hurt. He just gets steamrolled by Alvin Walton. And this is not the knee. They grabbed him quickly, and that's what they would do if he was had the wind knocked out of him. Alvin Walton sends Jerry Rice into the next zip code with that hit. Here it is right here. Now, Jerry Rice is going to come in from the right. There he is. But look how Walton gets low and hits Rice right in the midsection and sends him backwards. First down at the 36-yard line, and a marker is thrown, a penalty flag because the 45-second clock had run out. Next time he sees Alvin Walton coming down the field. Hey, the trouble they had with their passing game, Rice had 22 touchdown receptions a year ago. He's had one touchdown reception in the last seven games. And he's looking for his first catch tonight, and his injury cost them that delay of game penalty because Wilson was late getting onto the field. And Roger Craig gets hit right away by Darrell Grant, big number 77, excited about making that tackle. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way you're supposed to play the game, Darrell. Nothing wrong with that. This game could use a little more emotion, and I'm not talking about just tonight's game, but I like to see emotional football players. And Darrell Grant, right there, fought off his blocker, and that's a textbook tackle of Roger Craig. Get up, get fired up a little bit. Second and 16 from the 42-yard line. And Montana gets tripped up for a sack at the 47. He tripped over, I think, his own man, Steve Wallace, and now Montana clutches his knee. I think if he had not, and it did appear that he hurt his knee or his ankle, he could have got up and run that football. Yeah, because it wasn't a Redskin that sent him to the ground. Steve Wallace, number 74, is trying to block Dexter. He gets driven back in. Let's. Well, we've got Dexter. Here we go. That's Wallace working against Manley. Now watch Montana make a break to the inside, okay. and Joe has hurt himself so bad, he's going to have to come out of the ball game. And here is Steve Young, at least for this play. And so Young, who comes in cold, comes in with it third down and 21. From the 47, and the left-hander retreats. Young, tremendously mobile, 
takes it to the 35-yard line. He gains 12. Walton and Marshall converge on the tackle. If they're thinking field goal, it would be a 52-yarder as they work on Montana on the near side. That knee, it looked like he could have just banged it right into his own man, Steve Wallace. I'm sure he would have got him. Now, what you get with Steve Young is a totally different dimension. And in effect, he was sort of given this job a few weeks ago when Joe was unable to play. He started the game against Minnesota, and while he didn't pass the ball too well, he ran the ball really well. They won that game and then lost the game against Phoenix. And Kofer will set up to kick a 52-yarder. His career long is 44. Helton holds. It is long enough by plenty and good. Give Steve Young an assist. His ability to scramble. Got that ball within Kofer's range. And they go back 15 years of Bruce Gossett field goal, the last time they made one from this range. A good look at Kofer following through, and while this was 52 yards, by our viewpoint up here, that could have been good from five more on Joe Montana on the 49er bench as San Francisco has taken the lead on a Mike Kofer 52-yard field goal. He started the season slowly. He'd been 0 for 4 from 50-plus, and he bangs that one through by, as Dan said, at least 5 yards. I mean, there was no question about the distance once it left his foot. Ricky Sanders back to receive Kofer's kick. 11.46 to play in the half. Goulding kick, three yards in, down by Sanders. And another another look here, and you can tell by how far this clears the crossbar. Now you'll hear a lot of announcers overuse saying, oh, it might be good from five yards more, but I think it's applicable when you're talking about a 52-yard kick. Watch the distance. This clears the crossbar. I mean, that football is a good 10 or 15 feet above the crossbar. When it goes over on a 52-yard kick, uh, significant what kind of a leg Kofer has. You hit that in Denver, it's good from 63. You might have injured the horse if you made that in Boulder. <laughs> First down, Washington from the 20-yard line. Williams protected well again, and he throws to Joe Carabello, number 88, the second-year tight end out of Tulane. He stopped by Pete Cougar. It's a gain of about eight, second and two. How about if we zero in on Jim Lachey, the Ohio State All-American, now the left tackle for the Washington Redskins, working against Kevin Fagan, and not the best of technique, back on his heels, and I'd say that time, give the credit to Kevin Fagan, who gets back and really disrupts the throwing motion of Doug Williams. We'll say that time, poor technique. Second and two from the 28-yard line. Smith fights his way across the 30 for a first down. Kevin Fagan, number 75, making the tackle. Again, coming into the game, the Redskins, even with a 6-5 and five mark, still just a half game from the lead in the NFC East. There'd be a four-way tie for the top spot in the NFC East. 49ers, meanwhile, with a victory, would be two games back of New Orleans in the NFC West, but tied with the Rams for second. First and 10 from the 32. Smith again. San Francisco ball. Second time Smith has fumbled. He recovered his earlier one, but this time the 49ers have it in Washington territory. And Joe Gibbs repeatedly, when he describes his team, says, we've been way too charitable. A minus 15 going into this game in the giveaway takeaway. Let's make it minus 16 now as Ricky Ellison gets a hand in there and forces the ball out of Smith's hands. And knowing Joe Gibbs, we might have seen the last of Timmy Smith for a while. And Steve Young stays on the quarterback for the 49ers. From the 37-yard line, Young gets knocked down and sacked back at the 45-yard line. Pushing through, beginning the charge, was Darrell Grant, who's having a big half. Takeaway giveaway, Dan referring to it, now minus 16. It's amazing when you think about it. 
for 18 seasons, 70 through 87. There they were, tops in the league at a plus 123, and this year, unbelievably, minus 16. When you're minus 16, normally your team at this point in the year is 3-8. and eight. The other day when Gibbs talks about a running back, uh, one of his compliments always when he winds up a synopsis of a running back skills is that he doesn't turn it over. Second and 16. fighting his way to the 37-yard line. To further put that giveaway takeaway into perspective, the only teams with worse figures in that department would be Dallas and Tampa Bay, and you know where they are in the standings. And if you want to take it a step further, think back to the Redskins and their Super Bowl championship season of 82. They were plus 42 in the giveaway takeaway, and I brought that up to Joe Gibbs yesterday, and he said, yeah, but I had a running back who never put the ball on the ground. And of course, he was referring to John Riggins. And of course, that was a strike short in season. But plus 42, an amazing number. Third and 10, and the whistle. Procedure call. Yep, it wasn't for delay. No, they still had nine or 10 seconds left on yep. the 45 second clock. Never a full set by that offensive line, whether or not there was contact made. Jerry Seaman will figure it out for us. It was the left tackle, I believe. Steve Wallace. False start prior to the snap. Number 74, offense. Actually, the defense had 12 men on the field, but <laughs> since the ball was not snapped, that is not an infraction. What a mess, though. Mm. They're letting us know they're yeah. on top of it. Abs yeah, they sure are. That's interesting. Yeah. And it is not a penalty to have 12 men on the field until the ball is snapped. Had that ball been snapped, the Redskins would have been penalized. Yeah. And seeing it's a false start, that stops play before the ball is snapped. So <laughs> the double whammy for both teams, unfortunately for San Francisco, it only hurts them. 49ers in there, three wide receivers to the left and one to the right. That's Jerry Rice as Young nearly gets sacked but gets it away and it's incomplete. He was almost in the grasp of Charles Mann but was able to release intended for Terry Greer to leave fourth down and in comes the punting unit. I think Mann thought he should have got the call and here comes a man working against Harris Barton. He told us, Dan, he's having a hard time because of an ankle problem and a, a hip muscle tear to go around the man. He's been having to fight through the man. And he, he was reluctant to really say that's the reason why maybe my numbers aren't what they should be. But if he's a little injured, he wasn't uh, showing it there. Some of you might say, well, that, that should have been a sack. Remember, it's grasp and control. Helton's kick is angled toward the far side, fielded just inbounds, but stepping out at the 11-yard line was Gary Clark, who had the brilliant run back before. And this time, he makes the catch inbounds, but steps right out. Does he have control of Steve Young? He's got him wrapped up. He still delivers the football. I would have called that a sack. He had a good argument. It's the regular season college national championship, USC against Notre Dame. Frank, we, we know who you like. Who do you like, Dan? Uh, this is really something special. It turns on the entire country, and having played in three of those, I can guarantee you it's turning on the members of both of those football teams. And you'll see it Saturday at 3.30 Eastern time. Jamie Morris is in the game as the Skins running back from the 11 as they begin this drive. And the Michigan rookie slips a tackle and moves out to the 18-yard line. So we were musing about how much further Gibbs would go with Timmy Smith here in the first half. And here's Jamie Morris, the rookie, picking up seven on his first carry. They brought him in actually last week against the Chicago Bears, and they brought him in very early, and he had some nice runs. And he has a lot of talent. Of course, the brother, little brother of the Giants, Joe Morris, and out of Michigan, quite an athletic family. Joe, of course, out of Syracuse, where he set a lot of records. On second and three, Morris again is stopped at the 20 yard line. That's going to set up a third and one as Ricky Ellison makes the tackle. Under eight minutes to play in the first half with the 49ers on top 10 to 7. And Montana loosening up after Young had guided the 49ers in the last series. Again, another look at Joe Montana tripping over the legs of number 74, Steve Wallace. And look at that left knee collapse as he got his cleats caught in the turf. And very obvious from that angle how his left knee flexed inward, working those ligaments. Tight formation, third and one for the Redskins. And that's Morris who 
can't get out of the backfield. Great penetration by the 49ers, and Ronnie Lott as well came charging in along with Bill Romanowski, number 53. And Ronnie Lott, give him the credit. Ronnie Lott on the end of the line of scrimmage, charges upfield, disrupts that play entirely. And he just makes things happen wherever he is. Number 42, watching the strong safety, short yarding situation. He reads the formation, knows he does not have a pass responsibility, leads the penetration. Good effort by the 49ers. Greg Coleman, the longtime Viking punter and the cousin of the St. Louis Cardinals speedster, Vince Coleman, standing back at his three-yard line. John Taylor to accept the kick, and it's another low kick. Taylor on the run at the 50. Brings it back to the 43, fumbles the football, but the play was dead at the 47. Whoa. Ball came out after his knee hit the ground. He was hit by Reggie Branch. It'll still be San Francisco's football, just barely. Well, so. you would think this might be worth another look, huh? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> you might get another look here, too. <laughs> it was very close. Cue it up and roll it. <laughs> Well, the question now is going to be, where does John Taylor lose the football? He still has it. He still has it. There's Reggie Branch. And there it goes, but it looked like the knee was on the ground when it went out. ...by Ronnie Lott of the 49ers, who, while in the grasp of a Dolphin opponent, throws a lateral pass to teammate Tom Homo, who then advances for an apparent touchdown. Now you make the call. Is this a touchdown? I got it! Oh, now people who work at home can get a great deal on an IBM. Since Lott was moving forward as he threw the lateral, this is a legal play, and the receiver is allowed to advance, in this case, for a touchdown. It's very closely. I was wrong. His knee is not quite on the ground when you can see the ball coming out. So technically, as we're back with Roger Craig, and Craig with a first down to the 32-yard line and a penalty marker at the 38-yard line. Let me get back to that. Technically, when you watch it in slow motion like that, you can say that's a fumble. The problem is that's not even subject to review because the whistle blew. The whistle blew by the official that called it down, thus ending the play. So it's not even subject to review because where do you go from there? Well, the whistle blew and it stopped the play. Meanwhile, the 49ers assessed for a holding call on Bruce Colley, and that's really been a bugaboo for the 49ers in the past month or so, holding calls from the interior linemen. And the most penalized team, fourth most penalized team in the league, and this totally uncharacteristic of the 49ers, that I think is their 21st holding call. Last time we saw these two teams on a Monday night as Montana's reduced to sending in the signals here, the 49ers picked up 14 penalties in a game in Washington. Young firing too high for Rice, intercepted by Walton. Penalty marker is down back up field, and Walton goes down at the 42-yard line. So an interception, and I think a holding call coming up against Harris Barton of San Francisco, which would mean the interception would stand. Dexter Manley getting a little pressure on Young there also. Holding, number 77 offense, penalty decline. First down. It's going to be on Paris. It's Bubba Paris. I think tackles Dexter Manley. Manley's going to use a straight upfield rush, but he gets the corner on Bubba and watch him just drag him to the ground here. Well, actually, he tries to get his arm out of the way, but once you're in that position, I'm afraid that it's a little too awkward. It's going to bring the flag from the sideline. And this ball, Frank, just floats on Steve Young. Steve Young really has had a problem with the passing game. His efforts for the 49ers, the positive ones, have been on the ground running it. First and 10 Redskins from their own 42-yard line. They trail by three. Morris, nowhere to go. Absolutely nowhere. Haley in amongst those making the tackle with five and a half minutes to play in the first half. And the 49ers leading Washington 10 to 7. Steve Young and they win over Minnesota had 72 yards rushing on that day. And you probably recall the one spectacular touchdown run that he had in that win. But he has had problems with the passing game. I'll tell you what I'm impressed with right now, the way the 49ers are playing the Redskin rushing attack. 
Look at this, less than a yard per carry. Boy, give credit to the 49ers defensively. They're just they're just playing stuffing the Redskins. And Washington has been stuffed two of the last three weeks as far as their running game is concerned. Williams hits Munt, and Lott rides him out of bounds up at the 47-yard line. They'll be about six yards short of the first down with a third down play upcoming. Last week against the Bears, the Redskins running game, which has earned so much respect over the years, gained 28 yards against the Chicago Bears. Well, I, I throw that one to the wind. Because when's the last time you remember anybody running the ball against the Chicago right, let's Bears? Let's back it up another week to Houston. That one you can't throw to the wind. Houston no. just beat them up. But the Bears beat everybody up. <laughs> Third and six from the 47. Blitz. Williams unloads, and it's incomplete. Safety blitz by Greg Cox, who was in in the dime defense that time, and Williams forced to release early, incomplete, intended for Gary Clark. And good coverage by McKire. He is right with Clark all the way. All in all, though, a good throw by Doug Williams under a lot of pressure. This ball is very close to being caught by Gary Clark. Nice bump and run coverage, though, by McKire. Look at them both playing the football, but... That ball actually off the fingertips of Gary Clark. Just credit the good coverage that time to Tim McKire. Greg Coleman into punt for the fourth time in the half. McKire came flying in, but he gets a good kick away, and Taylor fields the ball at the five-yard line, which is unusual to begin with. Not recommended. However, he breaks from the pack, good and eye. he has blocking. Taylor all alone is going to go all the way. 95 yards, touchdown. No flags. Uh, so much about being in the wrong formation a while ago. That will offset it. Second time he's run a punt back for a touchdown this season. The other was a gem as well, 77 yards. The 49ers will say tremendous individual effort. The Redskins will blame missed tackles. There's one right there. Clarence Vaughn misses. There's another miss, I believe, by Orr. But give John Taylor credit. Disorganized in the beginning. 95 yards. He is almost broken. A couple of others, and that'll be a new 49er record that's got to go back to the 50s because it belonged to Hugh McElhaney. McElhaney once ran one back 94 yards. Coker's extra point is good, and Candlestick Park has erupted with 424 remaining in the first half. I think I remember seeing that one of McElhaney's. It went about 150 yards, covering 94, but Taylor with great moves. And you're right, Dan, there were so many missed tackles, and boy, when they review this, because Joe Gibbs is a special teams freak. Well, you don't awful, often see a successful punt return start with a guy going parallel to the line of scrimmage like that. Normally, that just gives the defense all the time in the world, the coverage team, to get right down in your face, but John Taylor, all individually, made a miss. Give him the credit. There have been four punt returns for touchdowns this season in the NFL, and that man, John Taylor, has half of them. 17 to 7, San Francisco. I don't know anything that is more fun to watch, but it also electrifies your own ball club. You don't have to go out there and drive that thing any 80 or 85 yards. You get it all in one shot, and it changes everything. And a light rain begins to fall at Candlestick Park. The crowd noise might have brought it down. <laughs> yeah. 424 to go in the half. 17 to 7 49ers. Coker with a short kick this time. At the 14-yard line, Steve Gage. That wasn't as long as the field goal. No. <laughs> Tackles at the 26. To line that up with about a two-step approach. I think you can see where Cooper's priorities lie. Down to the bonuses. Pollard made the tackle on the play. And with the rain coming down, a very light rain at Candlestick Park. 
That's really frustrating to an entire football team when somebody runs the ball back against you like that. Doug Williams and the Redskin offense right now need a good drive to kind of stabilize things a little bit from Washington's perspective. At the 27-yard line. Williams picked off by Fuller at the 47-yard line, and he takes it to the Washington 48. A nice catch that time by Fuller on the ground, but I really have to wonder what Doug Williams could have possibly been looking at to go ahead and release that football. I think we'll get a look at it from behind. There's no way that Doug should have thrown this football. Double coverage all the way on his intended receiver, trying to hit Craig McEwen, and I just don't see any way Doug Williams should have thrown that ball. He read linebacker coverage on Don Warren, and it was Michael Walter who was with him, but Lying back, waiting for it, was Fuller, and Doug Williams just didn't see it. After further review, by instant replay, the play stands for that. They wanted to make sure that Fuller had made the interception. Montana, meanwhile, comes back into the game for the 49ers. You saw Williams explaining to Rippon what happened from his perspective. And San Francisco leading by 10 with the ball on the Washington side of the 50. First down. Montana throws incomplete for Mike Wilson. Second and ten. So the 49ers in control right now with 4.02 to play in the first half. Well, you have to know, too, that you know Bill Walsh, you know Joe Montana's mentality. They like to, when they get you down, they like to go for the juggler, and you wouldn't be surprised if they don't try to go up on top to Rice. Here's Craig going to the outside, turns the corner, and Roger Craig close to a first down. He's short of it by about a yard and a half. He followed Jeff Briegel, number 65, second-year guard out of Southern California. He led the charge. Craig takes it to the 40. It'll be third down and about a yard and a half with Young now signaling in the plays to Montana. I guess it's tough for me to let it go as an old offensive lineman, but I love to watch a back that knows how to set up his blockers. So important to give them the opportunity, and Briegel that time out in front of the play, but really was given that opportunity to make a good block by Craig's hesitation before he ducked it up. A short two, and Craig picks up three, and a first down. With the clock ticking down, 3.47, and the 49ers have two timeouts remaining as we come down toward the end of the first half. Next Monday night, we stay in the Pacific time zone, head north, and it's the Los Angeles Raiders and the Seattle Seahawks that makes that phenomenal run up the far sideline. Through the tunnel, and halfway to Tacoma. Flag goes down, two flags go down, separate instances, one on the line and one in the backfield. Dexter Manley came charging across. That'll be one flag, and we'll see about the other one. I think the other one's going to be Harris Barton for tackling Charles Mann. Should be offsetting here. Or somebody putting number 79 offense, yeah. offside, number 72 defense, offsetting penalties, repeat first down. So many times Manley tries to guess with the count. He'll time it, time it, time it, and figure that he's got the rhythm down of the quarterback because they develop a rhythm when they give you the snap number. And here's the other foul. Harris Barton gets beat to the inside by Charles Mann and pretty good open field tackle. Beautiful. Bulldogging the left leg of Mann and dragging him to the ground. Give Some him. kind of athlete, Charles Mann. Give him two ears and a tail for that one. <laughs> but don't call him Charlie. From the 36, Montana hits Rackman, and he takes it to the 29-yard line. That's a pickup of seven. It'll be second down and three. Mel Kaufman makes the stop. Under three minutes now left in the half. And this is that point in a football game and at that point on a football field where someone from the Redskins has to make a big play defensively. The 49ers in control right now, up by 10 points. The Redskins offensively make a mistake, and it's up to these guys now to make something happen. If they don't, going to the locker room at halftime, down by 17. Unattractive. On second and three, Montana throws 
to the outside where Rice makes his first catch and goes out of bounds after picking up a first down. Tackled by Wilburn at the 17. And that has just got to come down from up above because Wilburn with that sore knee is laying so far off of Rice. Wilburn at least five, six, seven yards off Rice. Now you really can't blame him, but he has got so much respect, but more than respect, the knee is still not all the way back. And a knee injury to a defensive back, I mean, it is really tough. How about Alvin Walton? He comes after Jerry Rice on every play. It's a good thing Rice got to the ground in a hurry here. Alvin Walton was looking to take his head off. At the 16, Roger Craig takes it to the 15-yard line for a gain of one. Bill Walsh will watch his team right now with the two-minute warning approaching, come up with a second down and nine. They lead by 10, and the clock will run down to the two-minute war warning in San Francisco. 49ers on top, 17 to 7. Performance in Seattle. Next week, he returns to the kingdom as the Raiders beat the Seahawks on ABC's Monday Night Football. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, and Dan Deerdorf. Late first half, two minutes to go. 49ers have the ball and a 10-point lead. It's second and nine at the Washington 15. Joe Montana, great protection, throws underneath. It's caught at the eight and taken to the four by Jerry Rice for a first and goal. And the Niners can do a couple of things here, seek to move into the end zone and also try to take as much time as they can off the clock. And I think a key for the 49ers here as they run crossing patterns, keep in mind how long a crossing pattern takes to develop. And on the plays when they seem to have the crossing patterns called, the Redskins aren't getting any serious pressure on Montana. First and goal in a minute 25. And Craig is stopped short of the goal line. He's inside the one. He is stopped by Darrell Green. It's second down and goal now. And as I say, the 49ers here have two timeouts, but they're going to let the clock run down, try to get in the end zone, and leave Washington with no time. And that's smart football. Smart football. Don't give the Redskins an opportunity to score. You still have some timeouts at your disposal. You don't need many downs to get it in from there, hopefully, if you're a 49er fan. Sole setback here is Rathman. And they give it to him, and Rackman is in for the touchdown. Tom Rackman out of Nebraska. That's his first touchdown of the season. And he handles the ball a lot. He had 79 rushes and 32 receptions coming into the game. He's a short yardage specialist, but that's the first time he's seen the end zone this year. And I'll tell you what else is impressive about Rathman out. The guy's got a four and a half yard per carry average, which is extremely high for a guy that's predominantly a, a blocking back for Craig. And they blew another opening in that Redskins defensive line. Went right behind his 13-year veteran center, Randy Cross. Elton puts it down for Cofer. His extra point is good. And a flag is down. With 40 seconds to play in the half, Skins have all of their timeouts when they get the ball back. Do have Steven? to do this again. Trippy, number 74 offense. Repeat, extra point, 10-yard penalty. People have written him off up here. Tripping is a 10-yard penalty, so in essence what you have here is the equivalent of a 30-yard field goal attempt for the extra point. And it's blocked. So the penalty does make a difference. And the score remains 23 to 7. And it could have been Wilburn who burst through. Barry Wilburn, watch him come up out of there with his hand up in the air. He sure gave the impression to everyone here at Candlestick that he's the guy that block it, blocked it, but give that credit to this guy, Wilbur Marshall. What an athlete. He really didn't get any penetration on the play. He really just got it by jumping up at the line of scrimmage, which leads you to believe that the kick was relatively low. Well, earlier in that touchdown pass to Jones by the part of the 49ers, Montana just did get it over the hands of Wilbur Marshall. Meanwhile, for his kick is a bouncing kick. And it turns out 
to be a good one. It's Sanders back at the one. And DeBose catches him from behind out at the 15-yard line. Another marker is down. 34 seconds to play. And again, the Skins with all three timeouts. And this one will go against Washington. So it's going to pin him further back. Also at halftime, we'll be talking to a couple of key combatants in that game coming up Saturday, Notre Dame and USC. I think I saw Terry Orr here making a block from behind. Illegal block during the return. Number 87 receiving team. They're down by 16. They're at the six. First and 10. And Oliphant and the Skins will be content just to go in down by 16. Not chance another turnover because the turnover has been the bugaboo. And so unless the 49ers stop the clock, that figures to do it for the first half. Important thing, Al, now I think for the Washington Redskins when they go into the locker room is for Joe Gibbs to talk to his offensive unit and say, guys, we have the time and we have the talent to be patient. Let's not try to do it all on all time to work it short, run the football, and try to make it happen patiently. Taylor makes the intercept, or Taylor with a great punt return. The interception leads to another 49er march and touchdown. San Francisco leads at the half by a score of 23 to 7. And we'll return to San Francisco after this message from the National... With over $2.5 billion in assets, Primerit Bank offered financial institutions big, safe, friendly... ...goes to reveal their employees' tip income. Tony standing by with the latest on the... ...the second half, each of those men with two Super Bowl rings. Bill Walsh in his 10th year with the 49ers. Joe Gibbs in his 8th with Washington. And the 49ers lead 23-7. Start the second half. This is John Taylor, who had the electrifying punt return in the first half, taking the kickoff back to the 24-yard line. And this ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Citizen. No other watch expresses time as beautifully by Miller Genuine Draft, cold filtered for real draft taste. It's as real as it gets. And by Buick and your Buick dealer, the Great American Road belongs to Buick. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, Candlestick Park in San Francisco. Had a brief light shower in the first half. Dry right now, temperature in the upper 50s. 23-7, San Francisco and Montana who left Briefly in the first half with a sprained knee. Gives to Craig. And Roger Craig with that high knee action takes it out to the 36-yard line behind the block of Tom Rackman, a Nebraska alumnus. When you talk about the way a running back is supposed to exert maximum effort to attempt to gain yardage. Roger Craig is that guy. Behind the block of Tom Rathman, who came across the formation in motion and just puts it right into the chest of Alvin Walton and drives him to the outside. But look at the effort by Craig. One tackle already broken. Fights through and picks up two or three positive yards when many men would have been driven backwards. From the 36-yard line. This time there is nothing there for Roger Craig, who leads the NFC in rushing. Eric Dickerson leads the NFL. And there are the numbers through the first half. And the two turnovers by the Washington Redskins. Still Granted, up. they're down in yardage, but the last one, the most costly, the interception, which leads to a touchdown, a touchdown that really has put the 49ers in command of this football game, Frank. And only 15 rushing yards for the Redskins. So for the third time in the last four weeks, no running game for the Skins on second and ten. Montana intended for Craig. He was covered by Raven Caldwell. Third and ten now. And the one thing about this guy, even with a 23 to 7 lead, no hesitation when it comes to putting the ball in the air. That's the 49ers offensive style under Bill Walsh. Throw, 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 and then throw some more. Whether it's Steve Young or Joe Montana, doesn't make much difference. Montana, according to the NFL's complicated rating system, the all-time leader in pass rating. As he throws to Craig, wide open in front of Craig. And Craig breaks a couple of tackles and then gets taken down as he reaches the 49-yard line for a first down. And Wilbur Marshall is down on the ground for the Redskins. 
Not a bad place to go with your screen. If you're going to screen, take it over to the side where Dexter Manley is. Wilbur Marshall got himself in the middle of the screen, and he is holding that right leg. By one of the 49ers. Let's see if we can pick it up. It might be Randy Cross, the center, who came out and is going to put Wilbur Marshall on the ground. We're not going to see it from this angle. But I think it's Randy Cross who gets the block on Wilbur Marshall, and that explains why Craig is so wide open, flaring out of the backfield. And you saw Manley take it to the inside. Marshall would have got position, but he also was inside. Look at the 35-yard line. There's the block right there by Randy Cross, who actually leg whips Wilbur Marshall. Marshall going to jump behind. Watch Cross get by him and then leg whip back. Keep an eye on his legs. Wilbur Marshall is going to move behind the blocker, and there it comes. There comes the leg up in the air. It's a more of an instinctive reaction by an offensive. Very close to being downfield. I would think so. I mean, Cross, Cross. is that kind of guy. Yes, you know, Randy is. Cross, uh, there's no classier guy in the NFL. No, it's, and believe me when I tell you, that really is an instinctive type of reaction. You find yourself out in space. You don't feel contact with the guy you're trying to block, so you do everything you can do to put the man on the ground. Marshall gets a lot of it because he is, of his ability and his agility, he's always moving away from the block. From the 49-yard line, Montana throws an incomplete intended for Ron Heller. The tight end, it'll be second and 10. By the way, if you're wondering about Cross's block, is it legal or illegal? It is illegal. It's illegal to leg whip someone like that. And if an official would have seen it, it would have drawn a flag and negated that gain by Roger Craig. Cross anchoring the line. Randy, the longtime guard, now the center for the 49ers in his 13th year out of UCLA. Second down 10 from the 49-yard line. Montana, Craig wide open. Takes it at the 30, gets inside the 20. Flag is down. He's tackled at the 14, but there's a flag in the backfield at the 40. That's going to be a hold, and they're going to bring it back. And there goes a 37-yard gain. Well, I'm not sure who they're going to call here. I guess Jerry Seaman will tell us. Illegal hands to the face. Number 61 offense. Still second down. Jesse Sapolu. Well, Sapolu will be lined up across from Daryl Grant. And not a hold, that's an illegal hand to the face. If we can get the same situation, I know Bill Walsh will come back with that. That was an app, just another pick play. And again, very effective. Bringing Craig underneath, Rice coming down and in. 47-yard swing, 37-yard gain into a 10-yard loss. Second and 20. And the pass is caught at the 20, at the 45-yard line by Doug DeBose. A running back who was split out in this formation, Doug DeBose, out of Nebraska, bobbling it and then holding on, making his sixth catch of the season. He stopped at first and then he caught it. Let's take a look at it again. Montana looking deep, spots DeBose. He's the open man. Yeah, there it is, concentration, and he comes down with it. Daryl Green makes a hit and really jars the ball loose. Not much else Green could have done. Fabulous concentration, though, by DeBose. Third and 15, two receivers to the left and two to the right, and they send Rathman out into the pattern as well. And Montana hits Rathman at the 50, but he's well short of the first down. Kurt Gouveia was over the middle covering him. And so from midfield, the 49ers will have to kick the ball away with 11 minutes and five seconds to play in the third quarter. And Joe Gibbs' Redskins will have the football for the first time in the second half. San Francisco on top, 23 to 7. Barry Hilton, the rookie out of Colorado, he was cut before the opener, but then Max Runniger had a bad day in New Orleans. They got rid of Runniger, brought Hilton back, and he's been improving. Though tonight he's been kicking low, low line drives. This one end over end. Fielded at the 15, a fair catch made by Gary Clark. He had a beautiful run back before, and he had room to move with this one. 
No, he wasn't taking any chances. You're up there. Washington, after the Redskins had squandered a 21 to nothing lead, but with 40 seconds left, this three-pointer gave Washington the 24-21 victory and sent them to the Super Bowl. Well, the Redskins fumble, punt, punt, and that second punt was run back by Taylor for a touchdown. Interception, end of half. 27 total yards, Al, mm. and only 15 on the ground. And from the 15-yard line, Williams throws from Monk, and he makes the catch out at the 22-yard line. He's tackled by Tim McKayer after a gain of, let's call it, six. But I think that that's what the Washington Redskins have to do. I talked about it a little bit before the end of the first half. I think this is really the time for them to be patient. San Francisco is going to be falling back into some deep zones. They're going to be waiting for Williams to try to force the ball deep to try to make something happen. And I think if the 49ers, if the Skins rather, are going to be successful moving the ball, they're going to have to do it a little bit at a time. Plenty of time with a Monk and a Sanders and a Clark. Second and a long three from the 22-yard line on the end around. This is Clark behind a block from McEwen, but breaking up the play is Ronnie Locke. He was trying to follow McEwen out in front, and Locke came in from the backside to take him down at the 24-yard line, short of the first down by a yard and a half. I think you might have been thinking about this, Dan. You don't really need this yet. You've got to establish that you can move the ball. They haven't done that all night. You're not going to beat them with gimmicks. And they have plenty of time, even down 23 to 7, if they can get their game back together. 49ers in the type of defense they're going to be playing with this kind of lead. You're playing right into that. Third down, a yard and a half from the 24-yard line. And Williams to throw, and it's caught at the 34-yard line by Gary Clark for a first down. You know, of all the elements of their offense, the one that has held up throughout all the problems this year has been the wide receivers. Gary Clark and Monk having another good year. Ricky Sanders. They have played back to their form of a year ago. It's just many, many changes for the Redskins on that offensive line that has affected them so dramatically. Never starting the same group. Timing off. 8.30 to play, third quarter. San Francisco ahead by 16. This is Jamie Morris, and the Michigan rookie breaks one to the 50 for a gain of 16. He's caught by the outside linebacker and co-rookie Bill Romanowski. Well, that's one of the few times tonight we've seen the counter gap run by the Skins run effectively. R.C. Thielman, the right guard. Mark May, the right tackle. Look at them both get out in front of the play. And what? Jamie Morris takes it right where it's supposed to be, in behind those two guys and then back upfield. May all the way around from the right side. There he is out leading at number 73. That's their longest run in the last four weeks. A 15-yard pickup to the 50. Caravello in motion. Take to Morris. Williams over the middle. Tipped and nearly intercepted. All red shirts around Clark, and Michael Walter was the man who tipped it. I think three different 49ers touched that football. I think Walter first, and then two of the defensive backs got their hands on it. Eric Wright, and then I think Ricky Ellison might have been the last guy who almost got it. Great effort by Walter. He gets the hand up there first in a diving effort. There's now one. It's loose, and it does attract a crowd. There's two, and there's three. Walter to Wright to Ellison. Incomplete. <laughs> Second and 10 at the 50. Oliphant is the setback. Monk in motion. Pressure on Williams, and he gets it away to Sanders at the 41-yard line. And that's a gain of close to nine. It's going to set up another third and one, and they went to the air on third and one earlier in the series. And that tells you something about the offense right now. Frank mentioning their receivers have held in there. Their running game has been basically non-existent. If you join us late, Timmy Smith started the game, fumbled twice, has not been in the game since, but now he comes back in. This is their short yardage run situation that they have in there, the people for the short yardage. He lines up behind Reggie Branch. And Branch leads the way for Timmy Smith, and Smith is stopped at the 40. He is short of the first down. 
They have to get just inside the 40-yard line. Tough. Fuller, Ellison, and Walter in on the tackle. Tough decision. I think they'll go on this one. Down by 16. I think they're compelled to. Well, if you think back to a year ago, the way the running game was going at this time of the year, there wouldn't even have been a question about it. Now there has to be some doubt that kind of percolates through the entire ball club. You think about the Super Bowl, it's what comes to your mind first and foremost. This would have been a six-point dash. Fourth and inches from the 40. And Smith this time, and he is stopped at just about the line of scrimmage by Michael Walter. And again, they have to get just inside the 40. If he puts the nose of the ball on the 40 or outside, they do not have the first down. It's going to take a great spot for the Redskins to get a first down. I don't think they made it. What a superlative play on the line of scrimmage by the entire front wall of the 49ers. And it's going to be close. They put the ball right on the stripe. The nose of the ball is on the stripe. The stick appears to be just, as I say, inside the 40-yard line. So with a naked eye, it would say San Francisco ball. And they're going to bring the sticks in to make it official. 49er defense has not been the problem this year. They played great defense. Fifth overall in the league coming into the night. Two winningest coaches of the 80s. So here's the measurement. They are short of the first down. As we said, just inside the 40 is where they had to get. Huh. And they got right to the strike. You know how that hurts. They prided themselves so much in their offensive line over the past few years. The surge here is by the 49ers and a great defensive surge. Led not by even, Walter. Not even close. That is amazing. I you know, you think about this team, the Redskins, and the counter gap in the Super Bowl and the way they began this season on the ground. There it is in their last four games, not even averaging three yards a carry. And tonight, their long gain of 15 on the last series. 49ers have the ball. Montana throws. Intercepted at the 45-yard line by Barry Wilburn. And that's the play the Redskins need to turn the game around. If they are to turn it around, he takes it to the San Francisco 41. So they come up short on fourth and inches, and then Montana coughs it up on the very next play. And this is what Barry Wilburn has not been able to do. Make a quick cut, make a quick move off that knee over the past few weeks, and we talked about a little earlier how tonight he appeared to be much quicker and much sharper stepping right in front he's back there laying off in the zone Montana a little slow getting it there the interception and the Redskins dearly needed that at the moment some call though Roger Craig really just starting to get going on the ground and on first down Montana goes to the air and this is Morris who gets wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage by Charles Haley, a pass rush specialist, but stuffing the run as well that time. Tackles him behind the line, and does he ever come charging across the line of scrimmage? Well, he was a defensive end a year ago. They moved him to linebacker so they could move him around a lot. He just goes back to the natural form of the defensive end on the full sprint. And he's playing back to that game against the Chicago Bears a few weeks ago where he was just everywhere. Second. One of the ways to defense that counter gap is with that kind of backside pursuit. Second and 14 at the San Francisco 45. 5-16 to go, third quarter. 23-7, 49ers. Pressure on Williams. Throws high, caught at the 30-yard line. Nice catch by Ricky Sanders, tackled by McKayer. Close to a first down. We'll see where they spot it. They have to get to the 31 for a first down. I guess we've all been touching on it tonight, but clearly the strength of this Redskin football team lies in their wide receiver core with Monk, Clark, and here Ricky Sanders. What a difficult, a difficult ball to handle. High into the outside, and... Ricky Sanders is only 5'11". Look at this. Well, that's a, that's a nice catch. In this type of situation with the ball away from you, beautiful catch by Sanders. And a first down at the 30-yard line. Morris goes nowhere. This drive set up by that interception by Wilburn. That interception by Barry was his first 
of the season. He had nine last year. Wilburn had nine to lead the team last year, and the Redskins all season long have intercepted nine in 1988. There he is playing hurt. Joe Gibbs said last night, he said, here's a guy, everybody's on him because he's getting beat, but he's playing hurt. He said, I have more respect than ever for this guy, what he's going through. Williams retreats on second and 10, hits Monk. He sidesteps Romanowski, moves to the outside and gains nine, tackled by Eric Wright. Art Monk. Again, Williams under pressure as he was a few moments ago, and he had to fire the ball. And Monk, like Sanders, the play before, comes up with a fine catch. Monk, a former running back, once he gets it, he's dangerous to go all the way. But again, Williams under a lot of pressure, throws a little bit behind. Good move by Monk. Tries to get behind Sanders for the block and does come up very close to the first down. And third and one, they come up in a run formation in tight as they send... Monk and Clark out of the game. They move Branch in as the fullback to lead the way for Jamie Morris. And they give it to Jamie Morris. And Morris runs into a stack in the middle. And he is short of the first down and flags all over the joint. Same well, short yardage play that they ran on fourth down a while ago that missed. And this could be a critical error if this is a face mask penalty against San Francisco because no way did Morris have the yardage for a first down. Face mask, five yard penalty. Oh, does he hate those penalties? Whoa. And this year the 49ers are just collecting them. They, they can't even figure out why. This would have brought up another fourth down situation. That's Ricky Ellison, number 50, and there's no obvious that he's got it. No question, rather, that he's got his hand on. He keeps it on there. And frankly, I don't see where that's a five yard. When you keep it on there that long, that should be the 15 yard variety. It could have been a half the distance, especially in slow motion. First down from the 15. Williams, he's got McEwen open and through his hands. Craig McEwen had broken free. He'd gotten by Jeff Fuller. And the pass may have led him a little too much, but it appeared that he could have had it. Craig McEwen is ha having a good year. Again, there is a safety blitz on. Bottom of your screen, McKayer coming, and it leaves McEwen all alone with Fuller. He's got him beat, and Doug Williams... Is just off the fingertips with it. Could have laid that up, perhaps. A little better than that. Had the man beat. Had he beat? Solid. Second and 10 at the 15. 2.34 to go, third quarter. Keep it on the ground. Running it inside is Oliphant, just off injured reserve. He goes to the nine-yard line. The rookie at a Puget Sound is stopped by Ronnie Lott, bringing up a critical third down and about four now from the nine. Very talented rookie also that's been on injured reserve. We talked about it earlier in the game. Good receiver out of the backfield. We watched him against Miami in preseason when he had six receptions and picked up a couple of touchdowns. Fourth-round draft pick out of Puget Sound. Monk and Clark both come to the right. Third and four. Oliphant in the backfield. 49ers show blitz. Here they come. And the pass is incomplete. Intended for Clark because the pressure was on Williams. And again, from the defensive backfield came Greg Cox, who broke up an earlier play as well. Cox and also Pierce Holt came charging through. Doug Williams very slow, getting up. No way the Redskins had enough men to pick up the blitz, which was so obvious. Doug did the right thing to get rid of it. But they just did not have enough men to block out that blitz. And that's Chip Miller, the rookie out of Minnesota, who got off to a staggering start this year, attempting a 27-yard field goal. Gibbs said last night, I knew it would be tough to replace Mark Mosley. I didn't think it would be this tough. Oh, another flag. Yep, after the kick, as Darryl Pollard came in and made contact. And we're, let's we're see, because it's going to be fourth down and four if it's against San Francisco, and it figures to be. Oh, it's we'll see if they want to take the points off the board or not. Otherwise, they could have a first down. Al, it's going to be running into the kicker. 
Yes. There's, now, no, there no, there's no question that it's running into the kicker. Now the question becomes, do you want to take the three or do you want a first down? Oh. And it's, they're down by, well, it's 23-7. If they want to take the points off the board, they may opt for the first down. Oh, there's no question. you got to take oh, the yeah. first down. And there was no question in the mind of Joe Gibbs. He held that finger up. First down. defense. It's a five-yard penalty. It made the first down. First down. Gibbs didn't even hesitate. He held nope. up that one finger. First down. Down by 16. you got to take the points off the board. Go for seven. Watch the bottom of your screen. The block's going to come. I mean, they're running into the kicker from the bottom. Pollard right there just makes contact, and you just cannot run into the kicker. I mean, it's and that's really inexcusable because he wasn't even in an awkward position off his feet or anything like that. If they'd taken the field goal, they still would have needed two touchdowns. This way, if they score a touchdown, they would need a touchdown and a field goal to take the lead. First things first, though, on first and goal. Williams throwing, and it's caught. After Sanders juggled it, he catches it for the touchdown. That was almost an incompletion. Sanders, juggling the football, was able to get it into his grasp before he stepped out of bounds. A good read by Doug Williams and a fine pass. Ricky Sanders that time coming in motion all the way across the backfield. Forces the secondary to run with him, and your hope is that somebody gets caught up in traffic. See Sanders there to the left coming in motion, and that's exactly what happened. One guy has to track him all the way across the backfield. I think it's Tim McKayer, and he's not able to do it. He ends up making contact with one of his own teammates. Four-point air on the special teams. Sanders, two touchdowns tonight. His ninth touchdown reception of the season. Low Miller kicks the extra points. So now they need a touchdown and a field goal after the key penalty on Pollard. It's 23 to 14 and capitalizing after the interception by Wilburn. And then after they'd made the field goal, the penalty on Pollard gave them the first down. And they're able to take three off the board and put seven on instead to get to within nine. And the rain coming down again, a light rain in San Francisco. As you look up at the Goodyear blip, and now the kickoff from Miller, Taken at the two-yard line, this is Doug DuBose. He begins to slip and is tackled at the 15 by Dean Hamill. And we have one minute. 27 seconds remaining in the third quarter at Candlestick Park in San Francisco before a crowd of 59,268. 49ers with the ball leading 23 to 14. 49ers have seen a 16-point lead drop down to nine, and they know all about squandering leads. It was only two weeks ago they led Phoenix 23 to nothing. And the Cardinals came back to win it 24-23. Roger Craig takes it out to the 20-yard line. That's a gain of five. Mel Kaufman, number 55, in on the stop. It'll be second and five. Well, this game, I think, vastly more important for the Redskins than it is for the 49 I mean, more important for the 49ers than the Redskins because right now, New Orleans has a 9-3 record. L.A. is two back of that, and the 49ers need this win tonight to stay within two of New Orleans. Well, the 49ers right now, even with a victory, would be two games, as you say, out of first. And thinking about a wild card as Bray carries, and he's close to a first down, but appears to be a little short. The problem that the loser is going to have here, Frank, is that they're going to they're going to have what amounts to the ninth best record in the NFC, and you've only got five teams going to the playoffs. So even though you might only be a game out of first, uh, you're in you're in some trouble. Yeah, the problem with the loser here is that the loser probably isn't going to be in the playoffs. That's and a major problem. Tough schedule coming up for the Redskins. They go home and they play the Cleveland Browns, then they travel to Philadelphia, and then they go back home for Dallas, who they're not going to have a whole lot to lose for that one. And then they're going to close against Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Again, a, a look at the wild card contenders in the NFC. And a lot of good football teams aren't going to be playing come holiday season. The 49ers, meanwhile, go to San Diego and go to Atlanta. And even though those two teams won and the, the Falcons have won three out of four, that's not bad in terms of uh, their next two games for opposition, quality of opposition. Then they come home and they they meet their big foes, New Orleans and 
the Rams, but at least they meet them at Candlestick Park, and they've already beaten each of those teams this season. Well, you look at those standings, and is this the ultimate parity? Yeah. This year, more than ever. I know that's the it's the, the word that's been used for years, but I think more so now than ever before. Third and inches, and Craig comes up well short. Thanks to Darrell Grant, again, in on a big play behind the line of scrimmage. Darrell having a big night. He came out here all stoked up if you were with us in the early going, and he's kept it alive, and the Redskins definitely are in this. And the fourth quarter will start with Washington getting the ball back. Back in St. Clyde, their town. We'll tell you why coming up at 11 o'clock. When one of these teams is facing the, the better than average possibility of being out of it, I think that makes for a little bit of a, a good football game. It, it has been and it continues to be because Washington's going to get the ball back. Unless Clark loses it as he fumbles it at the 43 and San Francisco has it. And Gibbs can't believe it. What? Well, have you seen a ruling? I haven't seen a... Yet one Did official one of came in and said 49er football. Well, they weren't very adamant about it. But he clearly indicated 49er football, and he indicates it again. And it just so happens there's a 49er on top of it. Bill Romanowski, the rookie, out of Boston College, not only on special teams, but starting tonight because they put Keenan Turner on injured reserve. I'm going to ask you, third round draft, a great career at Boston College. And of course, starting tonight for an injured Tina Turner, Harry Clark not handling it. This is only about the sixth or seventh time that he has been back on punts for the Redskins. And ordinarily sure handed, you would expect that of a receiver. Talked about those turnovers, and that's the third for Washington tonight. As Craig gets hit by Olkowitz and runs over him to the 40-yard line, picking up uh, about four. What a what a collision, though, between Olkowitz and Roger Craig. Remember the old saying, "Run with abandon." <laughs> he personifies that phrase. Boy, our booth is a long way from the football field here, and I mean a long way away. And so, that was clearly audible. You're right. Even feeling it might be more appropriate. You're right, Frank. How can you say that? Just because we're in San Luis Obispo, I don't understand. Second and seven as Craig picks up the first down. And so the 49ers capitalizing after getting the big break on the Clark fumble and a first down. And a flag now. A flag has just been thrown well after the play. And it might be on Wilbur Marshall. And Marshall has taken his helmet off and fired it into the turf. If there is a penalty on Marshall, it certainly happened a long way away from yeah. wherever the and way ball carrier was. Well after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 58, defense, throwing his helmet. First down. Yeah, it was yeah, a full five seconds after the play. But what was it about? He was way out of the play. Throwing his helmet where? I mean... Visibly upset. I mean, Wilbur Marshall was being blocked that time, I think by Tom Rathman. And I, and I saw them go to the ground, but following the ball carrier, Craig, I didn't see what happened afterwards. Maybe he threw his helmet at Rathman. Rathman, they'd like to be flankered to the right. Craig, he breaks a tackle by, a tackle attempt by man, and then gets taken down by number 55, Mel Kaufman. And I think Wilbur might have damaged his helmet. You saw him that time having to make a play without even his chin strap. He didn't even have his uh, chin strap buckled on, and now he takes it off. Here's Wilbur before the snap of the ball. That's an unnerving feeling for a football player without that helmet strapped on. <laughs> Wilbur's in the hunt anyway. He's still working on that helmet out of the field now. But it's going to come right off as soon as he gets up. Oh, you need that thing out there. Second and 14 from the 20-yard line. Montana stepping up. Room to run. And a little hurdle move and takes it to the four for a first down. 
And these fans must feel as if it's 1981. That was one of those by Montana. I'll show you. Well, Alvin Walton plays it all the way that Joe Montana is going to go to the sidelines and run out of bounds. Alvin Walton takes the corresponding angle to the sidelines and watch Joe Montana fool him and cut back to the middle of the field. Montana's going to roll to his right. Still a statement, though, too, Dan. He's been taking so much heat up here. The 10-year veteran, does he have anything left? That's the Montana that we used to watch in his early days. First and goal, and Roger Craig tries to cut it back, and it stopped at the four-yard line by Darrell Grant. Second and goal, 12 and a half minutes to go. San Francisco ahead by nine. Young next to Walsh. All this transpiring from a turnover by Gary Clark on the punt. What's being lost a little bit in here is Daryl Grant for the Redskins, who's playing a sensational ball game on the defensive line. That time he makes a play on Roger Craig for no gain on both of the short yardage situations. He's one of the guys plugging it on the inside. Big game for Daryl. Rice in motion, second and goal. Montana on a roll to his right. Has room, and Montana touchdown. He's in there. And you bet he's made a statement. And he's hurt. He's slipping a little bit. He took a big shot. Took the shot on the left knee that was hurt earlier in the game by Daryl Green. And the crowd making its own statement now for Joe Montana. They're on their feet. Sellout crowd, and they're all up. As well they should be. Daryl Green again. gets Up. right into the legs of Joe Montana on this run. An old 49er play. You give your quarterback, who is mobile, the option to either run or pass. Green came in, gave him everything he could, but he had to stay back with his man until Montana committed. No quarterback runs it better. You come up, and he'll dunk it over your head for the six After points. After further review by instant replay, the play stands. Touchdown. They were checking to see that he had gotten in. Oh, I'd hate to take that away from him. No, not at this point. Well, he, the ball has to break the plane. And I think Joe does a pretty good job of kind of scooping it out there. Watch him get it away from his body a little bit right there mm -hmm. and get it on the other side of the pylon. Just the ball has to break that plane. So after Clark fumbles the punt, Skirmish breaks out. No flags yet. Sapolu. Kick was good. There's Marshall again involved in it. With his chin strap buckled up. No flags this time. Extra point good. Joe Gibbs was saying last week, it seems in every game, the special teams have made a play that have really created a problem for us. No exception here. And this is the result at the end of the 49er drive. They lead by 16. Next week, he returns to the kingdom. The Niner is on top, 30 to 14. Taking advantage after Gary Clark had coughed up the football. On the punt return, Montana, two key plays on the drive, including the touchdown himself as Topher kicks off. This is Sanders, Ricky from the four. Not past the 20. Spun down at the 27-yard line, 11.42 remaining in the fourth quarter. Big weekend coming up as the regular season with Denver for first place in the AFC West. Skins down by 16. Over the middle, the catch is made by Jamie Morris. He has it out to the 33-yard line. Penalty marker. It'll be second and four. And from the Goodyear blimp, radar indicating some rain in the Bay Area, which we've seen already on a couple of occasions at Kansas. Defensive holding against San Francisco. You logged a few years, a few years here, didn't you, Al? Great area. rainstorm period of years for the 49ers. They were rarely in the hunt. Then Walsh came in in 79. Took him a couple of years to get it started. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the great year in 81 and on to the Super Bowl. They do it again in 84. And tremendous success through this decade. First and 10 from the 32-yard line. Monk makes the catch. 
And he's out to the 38-yard line. Interesting to note, Frank, the 49ers have the, the best record in the decade of the 80s in the regular season, a half game better than Washington. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the, the two top teams of the decade tonight. And I think it's also interesting to know that the 49ers in the final five games of the last seven years are 29 and six. And you know who I think should get a lot of the credit? Two owners that aren't afraid to spend money to get a winning football team. Jack Kent Cook and Eddie DeBartolo. Two guys that aren't afraid to go to the old purse to make something happen. Second and four. As Oliphant makes the catch. And drops the ball at the 45-yard line. But it's recovered by Washington. Bill Romanowski was there. And the Skins maintain possession. And it's clearly a fumble. The ball out before Oliphant gets anywhere near the ground. Romanowski, the rookie, is all around the football tonight and this just doesn't bear any resemblance to a Redskin football team with the ball on the ground as much as we've, as we've seen it here tonight. And as the Redskins have been doing all season long, playing sloppy football. There's the fumble, the ball clearly out, but recovered by the Skins. First and 10, Washington from the 45-yard line. Williams deep over the middle and a little bit behind Monk, who can't make the catch. He had position on Fuller, but the pass a little low and behind him with 10.04 to play. Low behind and a little late. Monk was there. Williams just a little late picking him up. A couple of funny things about Washington tonight. Not only uh, do they not have a running game and haven't for the better part of the last month, they've been giving up a lot of points as well. And, the NFL in the 80s, we talk about these two teams having so much success. Four of the last eight teams that won the Super Bowl didn't even get to the playoffs the following season. And Washington's going to have a, a tough uphill climb if they lose this one tonight. Oliphant has room. First down and a lot more. And finally tackled at the 35 after a gain of 20. The rookie from Puget Sound just off injured reserve. Of course, the scheduling now, it's been this way since 1978, but the way it's made up depends on the way you finish as to the toughness of the teams that you will play. And the Redskins, I know when they looked at their schedule coming up this year, they thought, do we have to do that? It has been an awesome schedule. First and 10 from the 35-yard line. Over the middle, it's caught at the 31-yard line by Ricky Sanders, and he is tackled by Michael Walter. That's a gain of about five, and it'll be second down. Let's call it a gain of four, second and six. We talk about the teams that don't get back into the playoffs, that don't get back to the Super Bowl. Well, you couple the scheduling the way it is now in the NFL with the fact that you are drafting number 25, 26, 27 for two, three, four years in a row, and all of a sudden you look around, you've grown old, you don't have any of the number one draft picks, the best players in the country. And that's what's been happening. Monk in motion, second and six from the 32. Here's Oliphant, and this time he is necktied from behind by Michael Walter, Michael Carter, number 95. Now, one of the things that the Redskins were going to try this year was to be a little bit different than, say, the New York Giants, where the Giants write something like 11 books during getting back in the Super Bowl hunt. Maybe. Maybe somewhere in the order of five or six books might be the uh, magical formula. I think 11 is the NFL record for penning tomes, isn't it? <laughs> they might have better copy after this year. <laughs> On third and six, Williams, the catch is made, and Monk, a brilliant job staying inbounds, taking it to the 16. We have seen tonight some of the best wide receiver play that we've seen all year long as far as receivers having to catch the ball away from their body. And Art Monk here with another example in motion coming across the formation and working against Torrey Nixon. But again, look at him go high and not only keep the ball but not go out of bounds. The momentum is there to carry you right out of bounds. I, I can't say enough about the work tonight of Monk, Sanders, and Gary Clark. Absolutely tremendous. Washington at the 16, 7-10 to play. 
Williams fires into the end zone and incomplete. Intended for Mike Oliphant. He was covered well on the play, and 7.07 now left. It'll be second down and 10. That's Ricky Ellison, who was back there with Romanowski. Sometimes, do you guys get the impression that Doug Williams throws the football on, uh, he knows ahead of time where he's going to throw it. I mean, that time he throws into triple coverage, going to Oliphant, and really luckily overthrows it, or else that thing's intercepted. Really no place to put it. Second down and 10 at the 16. Caught at the 11-yard line by Monk, and he's tackled back at the 12. And so they have six yards to go on what will be a third and six with less than seven minutes to play. And Washington trailing by 16. Six catches tonight for Art Monk. You're down 30-14. you got to put this in the end zone some way. you got to snap it up. you got to snap it up a little bit in the huddle, too. These guys are uh, taking their time. I would feel a little more urgency down to the extent the skins are down now. Yeah, they're down three scores. I'd try to run some plays a little quicker than they are. Clock down to 6.20 on third and six. Williams chase, throws, intercepted by Ronnie Lott. And again, no place to put it. The coverage was there on Monk, and Williams throws it right into Lott's hands. Great coverage downfield. Williams pressured out of the pocket, and he delivered it, tried to squeeze it in there on the third long situation. Perhaps should have thrown it away and kept the fourth down, but again, Ronnie Lott, the leader of this defensive unit, comes up with the interception. Well, first of all, Doug Williams is flushed from the pocket, but you still had another down to work with. Sometimes you just have to eat it or throw it away. 49ers have it at their own four-yard line with six minutes and 15 seconds remaining at Canal Stick Park. 49ers now on the verge of going seven and five, and they'd be tied with the Rams for second behind New Orleans. Washington at six and six would drop the fourth place in the NFC East. And San Francisco will try to take some time off the clock now as Roger Craig takes it up to the five for a gain of one. Tonight on Nightline, a message for George Bush. The defense bills are coming due tomorrow on ABC. Big night. Second and nine from the five is Roger Craig. High steps it for a first down to the 18-yard line. And that's exactly what you want to do. Take time off the clock and keep churning out the first down. Mr. Versati Mr. Versatility two out. He can take it outside. We watched him go inside. Super receiver. They've used him tonight as a wide receiver. But he knows where the first down marker is. What a talent. So much has been said about the old football phrase about a running back having high knee action. You just don't see it where it's so graphically illustrated the way it is when Roger Craig runs the football. It's just like he shifts gears when he senses he's going to be hit and gets those knees up by his chin. How difficult it must be to try to tackle that guy. Here he is, let's see if he puts it into motion here. No, one way to stuff it is like that. Wilbur Marshall right there before he can generate any momentum. Yeah, if you don't let him turn up field. And Wilbur has been playing a good football game tonight. Wilbur, one of these guys that is really starting to settle into the Redskin defensive scheme. He came over with an awful lot of pressure, but I think the Redskins are getting their money money's worth now. Talking about Craig, there he is uh, behind Dickerson and Walker in terms of rushing in the National Football League at the moment. Washington has taken a timeout. Park in San Francisco. <laughs> the sideshow goes on. Hope he doesn't make a mistake. Take a bite out of the wrong item. <laughs> Talent, sur talent surfaces in many different ways, doesn't it? Yeah, he'll curl the hairs in his nose. Yeah, this guy, this guy'd be fun to have over at Thanksgiving, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Come on, I go had, for it. I had a waiter like that last week at a restaurant. Yeah. In your restaurant. <laughs> I Se fired him. Second and 12 from the 15-yard line is Roger Craig. Takes it up to the 20. Washington had taken a timeout. <laughs> yep, he's. He's still hanging in. Run it backwards. Well, 
I just like to bob for apples with this guy. Look at <laughs> Washington has taken another timeout. They are conserving what they can on the clock, which is now down to 420. They have a third down or have uh, San Francisco pinned at the 23rd and seven. And Washington has just taken back to back timeouts. I know a morning show he can get on. What's it take? It takes a 30 to 14 ball game. <laughs> and that's <laughs> and that's what we have. <laughs> or Halloween. Are you talking about share? <laughs> <laughs> Third and seven from the 20. And Montana going deep for Rice. It's tipped and it's caught. And Rice is out in front and Jerry with a touchdown. And how do you think Daryl Green feels? Daryl Green with Jerry Rice gets a hand on the football instead of getting a Pat on the back for a job well done. Ends up being the GOAT. He's been playing hurt like Wilburn has with the bad knee also. And this time, I was right off his fingertips. But even could have been an interception. And in the records, it's going to go down as a Montana touchdown pass. I mean, look how well played it is by Daryl Green. Just a bad break. I'll tell you one thing. I'll take both those guys on my football team. I'll go to war with either Daryl Green or Jerry Rice. They'll probably both be in Honolulu. They both ought to be. Rice's sixth touchdown catch of the season. Mike Colfer for the extra point. And that's good. This drive started back at the four as the 49ers were just trying to take time off the clock. Well, they did that and added seven points. They lead 37 to 14. And among the problems, and we've talked about Washington, their running game in disarray right now. Williams throwing interceptions, and defensively, only Pittsburgh and Tampa Bay have given up more points per game than the Washington Redskins, and that is amazing. It really is. How about that pass pattern as we look at it again? You think this pattern down the near sideline, the fly pattern, you think that sends shivers up the spine of every New York Giant fan? 78 yards in week two. This one for 80. Boy, this guy can explode at any time, and here's the same guy that threw it against the Giants. And there seems to be a little football left in Mr. Montana. Well, Art Spander, the lead columnist for the San Francisco Examiner, was musing today if the 49ers lost. He was wondering about this being possibly the end of an era in San Francisco in addition to it being a very important game. Well, the end of the era may be eventually headed this way, but not tonight. Montana with one more year on his guaranteed contract, and that has been, uh, what, extended to 1992, 1992 right? 92. Art was Art, Art was musing. He was musing. Musing, eh? Evening musing. He's also hanging around. Right. <laughs> Ooh, what a hit on Morris. Felt that one, too. Jim Fonhorst. His first call of the night, and he makes it a memorable one. Minnesota meets Michigan. <laughs> the little brown jug. <laughs> <I was gonna laughs> <say goodnight. laughs> Jamie Morris from Michigan. Jim Fonhorst gets blocked right into the play by Terry Orr. And whoa. Montana, there is numbers for the year over 2,000 yards after the performance to this point tonight. 13 touchdown passes. He's run for one as well this evening. 24 yard line, first and 10. Oliphant. Looks for room and is stopped at the 25 yard line. 3.48 to go. Moved around a lot to get a yard out of it. Interesting thing about this Mike Oliphant. He, oh, there goes a the flag, oh. Al. For a change. A little <laughs> late. For a change. <laughs> Jerry Seaman. Delay of game. Number 49 defense. Jeff Fuller. Lead in getting up. And he's laying on top of... Oliphant not letting him get off the ground. Look at that Oliphant. He 
had great numbers as a sophomore and junior at Puget Sound and then hurt his back and his hip as a senior, so the Redskins were able to get him in the third round. Second and four, and out at the 38-yard line, the catch was made there by Art Monk. He's tackled by Ronnie Lott. 3.28 to go, and the Skins now without a huddle. I don't know what difference it might have made tonight, but again, here we're with us at the beginning of the telecast. Kelvin Bryant not even here tonight, out with an injured knee. 37-yard line. And up at the 44 now, the catcher's made there as the Skins move the ball up the field, but they're down by 23. Jerry Rice on Monday nights back in 85. Huge night against the Rams, 86 in Washington. 12 receptions. Another first down here at the 35-yard line. That's Clark. And then to pick it up again against the Bears last year here when San Francisco rounded them 41-0, three touchdown receptions. And even this year in Chicago, he didn't have a big night, but he scored their only touchdown in the 10-9 loss. In that 86 game, they lost that game. They lost Over that game. 500 yards of offense that night. Remember that Montana had 441 yeah. yards passing, and they didn't score a touchdown. That's hard to do. And remember that, that game ended at uh, something like uh, three after one. Don't ask me. I wasn't here. <laughs> You were asleep. The 35-yard line. <laughs> Second and ten. You know, one thing about these Washington Redskins, uh, uh, we don't want to make it sound like they don't have a chance uh, to make the playoffs, but I think clearly, coming out of tonight's ball, coded, to say that the Redskins right now are playing good football. Second and ten. And I mentioned before, after the incomplete pass intended for Oliphant, Joe Gibbs talking about lamenting the fact that the special teams have, have made one bad play seemingly every week. And again, you go back into to tonight's game and think about the key play. It's the Taylor punt return of 95 yards makes the score 17 to 7. And then they have a blocked punt for a touchdown in that game. And the snapping problems. The second giant game, uh, Low Miller misses a field goal that would have won, uh, won it for the Redskins. I mean, it's been that kind of a crazy season for Washington. Monk takes it to the 18, and that's a first down with 2.33 to go. The kicking game, which traditionally has been a Redskin strong suit, just hasn't been there for them this year when they need it. Williams on first down from the 18. Hits Oliphant, but incomplete. He never had control as he was hit by Fuller. You know, and all this for a team with the acquisition of Jim Lachey, offensively one of the great offensive linemen, at least is anticipated he will turn into that. You go out and you get a Wilbur Marshall, everyone's number one linebacker in the league, and you would think going into it, you got a better football team. Then the injuries and wheels starting to come off and it sort of had reverberations through the entire ball club. And they throw in the fact that the schedule with their winning record, the Super Bowl champions, has been horrendous. But again, the personnel looks like it's there. Second and ten. Catch is made out of bounds. Sanders was on the chalk. Can there be anything worse than being an East Coast-based team? You lose a Monday night game, and then you got to fly back on that red eye and get home at... 8.39 well, o'clock It's better in the this morning. time of the year because you have the jet stream picks up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't have to look at Joe Gibbs at all. <laughs> Boy, that is a silver lining. I'll tell you what you else for anything better. when you lose one like this. It's a lot better flight if you win the ball game. You're oh, right. boy. I mean, you feel like garbage after a red eye anyway, and especially so after a distressing loss. Third and ten, and here's Monk, and at least Monk is having a big, big night as he takes it in for a touchdown. Having a good year. Fifth touchdown of the year. Came in tonight with 42 receptions. Been fighting the injury bug over the past couple of years. How about the way that Doug Williams is staying in this ballgame? We had a shot a couple plays ago of him yelling at his teammates to get in the huddle, trying to fire them up. He stays right with it. Can't knock his competitive spirit at all. Now we'll get hate mail from Tampa. Yeah. 
And he said at Tampa, send it to Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a star everywhere these days. That looks like six to me, Al. Six on top. <laughs> six on EBC. Does that mean the Ted Cobb is going to be there? <laughs> <laughs> That's worth seven. <laughs> it ain't good if we're down to counting exclamation points. <laughs> One out of four onside kicks have been recovered by the kicking team. Seven of 28. So your chances are at 25%. As Low Miller will squib it. Remember, it has to travel at least 10 yards before the kicking team can take possession. This one uh, travels considerably more. Gibbs caught by Mike Wilson, a wide receiver, at the two-minute warning. And give Rages to stand there and let that thing come down. Yeah. Give Ronnie Lott the tackle, though. <laughs> he dropped it. Two-minute warning. Inside kick. And they're at their own 42-yard line. Candlestick Park, home of the Giants. There's the Giants' bullpen. Those aren't the best seats in the house. <laughs> That's what you call an obstructed view from the 42-yard line. Roger Craig to the 43-yard uh, line. That's and the last time out for the Redskins. And we can tell you, the executive producer of Mon <laughs> <laughs> This guy, for those of you who wonder why we're laughing, I mean, Billy Edwards stands on the sidelines, wears the orange sleeves, and coordinates with the referee when we go to commercial, when we're gone. At this point, and the... Redskins have taken all of their timeouts, and so the clock will run down as DuBose carries. And our thanks is always up here to our statistician, George Hill, and our illustrious spotter, Malibu Kelly Hayes, America's number one designer spotter. Indeed. One twenty-four and counting down. Gibbs. Heading home. He'll prepare for Cleveland. Bill Austin, the coach at that point. Here's Tom Rackman out to the 46-yard line. And it'll be fourth down and six. And they can take it almost all the way out. Uh, the 30-second clock lags the game clock by about 12 seconds. A lot of fans have gone home at what a night for Joe Montana. Feeling the heat, as he has many times here in this area. And coming through with a superb night and playing half the game with a, an injured knee. Well, they love him. There's little doubt in my mind that having lived here for a number of years, there have been two contemporary super, super, superstars in San Francisco sports. One is Willie McCovey, and the other is that man. Two times. They the are loved, MVP. loved beyond description. Very cool about everything. But there's a lot of turmoil inside of this man. He is really affected by what he reads and what he hears. But last year, the rumors were going around. He was in some other state involved in all sorts of nefarious actions. And rumors this year about a possible trade the, to San Diego at one point. 49ers run the 45-second clock down as far as they can and then booted away and a fair catch is made by Anthony Allen at the 12 with three seconds to play. So one play left in the game. Al, you talked about the loved athletes here in the in the Bay Area. What about Bob Brindley? Uh, he would be about sixth. Sixth? Yeah. Okay. On the all-time list. But a terrific guy. <laughs> Bob Brindley, come on. Long night for this man, Doug Williams. And the thing about Williams, too, is you never hear him making any excuses after the game, and I'm sure tonight will be the same. One last gasp, Gary Clark, and then it'll pad the stat sheet, and that's about it. Up to the 33-yard line, Joe Montana in fine form tonight. Bill Walsh in his 10th season, and as we mentioned, at the center of a lot of controversy this week and this season. But tonight, all is aglow in San Francisco as the 49ers win a game 
They really had to win. And when you looked at that, Montana shaking hands with Doug Williams, Joe Montana sprinted all the way across the football field to get to Doug Williams to shake his hand. A couple of poignant scenes. A yeah. sprint by Joe Gibbs all the way across the field to shake hands with this man, Bill Walsh, who is also congratulating Doug Williams. Well, at least the Coke machine in the 49er locker room will be <laughs> spared dismantling tonight. For one more week anyway. 37 to 21. Al Michaels along with Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, and that's the story from Candlestick Park, where the 49ers beat the Redskins 37 